There is no denying that back in the day things were disturbingly different. Everything uncommon or unknown was either frowned upon, scary or mocked. And many people fell prey to these twisted ideas, becoming those specific strange, mysterious and terrifying things people whispered and condemned. But some of those individuals took advantage of their difficulties. With the help of relatives and acquaintances, they earned money thanks to their extraordinary image and unique talent. Well, the ones who did it freely. This became the side shows better known as freak shows circuses were excited to present. But how did it all start? And with who? Before people thought about capitalizing on humans' looks, congenital diseases and physical abnormalities were perceived as evil, demonic, and carrying bad luck for everyone around them, even claiming witchcraft as the culprit. But let's face it, everyone who was different got the short end of the stick. And with that, we start with the very first. Lazarus and his brother, Joens Baptist Colorado, were conjoined twins in 17th century Italy. Lazarus was completely mobile and could easily pass as a quote-unquote regular with the use of a cloak, but underneath, his brother Jones was protruding from his chest. Unlike Lazarus, he couldn't talk nor move, although if someone tapped his chest, he would slightly move his mouth. The twins were very popular. Even King Charles I wanted to see them, so of course everyone else wanted that as well. They traveled everywhere and made a good living out of it. Unfortunately, the first American attraction cannot tell the same story. In 1738, a woman who was first taken away from West Africa was brought to the States to be humiliated, all because of how she looked. Her captors, who were making money off of her, described her as a four feet tall, otherwise normal woman, but with the face of an ape. But things weren't looking good in the UK either. Another case would be Sarah Bartman, a South African woman born in the late 1700s that was convinced in her teens to exhibit her body in exchange for cash, although it's unknown if convinced meant forced. She was exhibited in London in 1810. She was described as the missing link between men and beast. Some people were pissed because slavery was abolished a few years back, so they fought for her, taking her show to the courts. But she denied being forced and it all ended there. Well, not really. She was secretly sold to a Frenchman who treated her less than human. She even had a dog collar on her neck. She died at 26 years of age. This is all disturbing, but all of this sent a big message. The strange can easily be capitalized. And one man that took that statement to heart was a man called P.T. Barnum. He soon became the manager of a lot of sideshows, and his method of advertising the shows was spot on. Let's say he could be named the father of clickbait. Barnum would overly embellish the act's titles because even though he knew it wasn't very ethical, he wanted the people to be amazed and entertained. By 1840, he had his museum dedicated to all his sideshows and thousands of people would run to see it. But after it caught on fire twice, he thought the best idea would be to take the whole show on the road. Approximately in 1870, Barnum took the museum to various circuses and became an instant hit. Around that time in Europe, there was a large migration influx, so families contemplated venturing into the sideshow gig. They were considered different because of their ethnicities alongside congenital diseases or special talent. So between Europe and America, sideshows were quite popular, some of them even becoming celebrities themselves. It all came to a halt in 1940. People's perceptions of these types of entertainment were troubling. This wasn't fun anymore, but exploitative. Especially because the treatment of the sideshows remains after they will pass. In some instances, their graves were robbed because people wanted to acquire their bones or even the whole skeleton. Once the people refused to visit their acts anymore, some sideshows packed their stuff and traveled town to town in small carnivals. Circuses went back to their business model, but the freak show act was left for dead. Although it didn't die, now there's a rebirth of this type of performance formed by the sideshows themselves. They know what they're doing, they have the control, and they do it because they want to. That is a big difference. This was a brief and condensed story about how this act came to be, and in the upcoming videos, I will talk about several of these acts and the people behind them. 
They were fascinating people with an interesting story to tell. I hope I see you then. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Stay safe.